here to acknowledge and thank our sponsors, welcome you guys, and thank you for being here. Uh, I'm going to. Uh, I have the privilege of introducing our MC for the evening. Um, but before I do all that, I wanted to take a minute and um, just uh, acknowledge that I'm really a pinch hitter tonight for our CEO at the National Association is Marvin Ventrell. He is en route uh, here now. We'll be uh, kicking things off in the morning. Um, and uh, Marvin's a hotshot speaker, quick on his feet. I, on the other hand, will be reading my remarks. Um, and this is from Marvin. And instead of trying to capture the flavor of it, uh, I'll just read uh, verbatim. Marvin said, good evening. <laughs> Welcome to the opening night of our 2023 National Conference. I regret I cannot be with you all tonight. As you are gathering, I am working my way back to you from a family wedding in Missoula, Montana. His nephew got married. So first things first, and I love that, and I'm glad that he entrusts us for this evening, but he, I know he'd like to be here. The opening night of our conference is a special time and my favorite event each year. It is the time after a long year of hard work when our treatment community comes together to connect, renew, and celebrate one another. You're in fine hands with Bobby and Jim Geckler. Well, we'll see about that. <laughs> it will be our privilege tonight to acknowledge the winners of our five addiction tre treatment leadership awards. And I send my congratulations to each of them. These awards are emblematic of the dedication you all bring to our life-saving work. So we congratulate and celebrate all of you tonight as well. See you in the morning. So. Marvin, in absentia, we love you, and we look forward to your being back with us tomorrow. Yes. We'll talk tomorrow about the state of the association, trends in our industry, fabulous developments like our um, Hill Day coming up, uh, the FORCE uh, research project, which Annie and her team have put forward. But tonight, I'll just, um, I want to say thank you to our sponsors. Uh, this is a big deal. It's um, put on every year. We, we're, we're grateful to welcome back our three event sponsors tonight, uh, Ashley uh, and Karen, Betty Ford, and NSM Insurance Group. And um, please, we couldn't have these events, we couldn't have this conference, we couldn't make this nonprofit run without their very generous support. It's not cheap and they stepped up and they always do. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Betty Ford. And uh, I'll, I'll put in a shameless plug for my friend, Sean Conboy. Could, couldn't be here tonight. He's with NSM Insurance, but he wants you to know. Oh, Sean. Sean, have you been coming to this for like 20 years? 21 years. Where does, where does the National Association get its insurance? NSM? <laughs> and do you specialize in behavioral health insurance? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, let's give Sean some love too. All right. Um, One other group that I'd like to acknowledge is our board of directors at the National Association of Addiction Treatment Providers. Marvin likes to play this game. He's pretty quick on his feet. Where he'll ask everyone to stand up. He'll individually introduce them. He'll name the treatment center that they represent. And one by one, they'll sit down. And this tension builds in the room as we wonder which person he's going to forget which treatment center they work for. And that's not happening tonight. So we're going to ask all of our uh, illustrious leader, volunteer, service board members, basically the board of directors, to please stand up. And if you wouldn't mind, just give them uh, acknowledgement and a round of applause. All right. So here's the little introduction part, it's pretty quick. I remember so vividly the day I was offered my first job in treatment. 
In my case, it was a position as the alumni coordinator at the treatment center in Minnesota where I got sober. In fact, it was that man, John Curtis, right over there that took a risk and hired me. I was 33 years old at the time. The first thing I did was to find a payphone at the nearest gas station on my way home and call my mom and dad. It was a long distance call, so of course, it was a collect call. <laughs> Needless to say, my parents had received a lot of collect calls from their, addict, from their oldest child over the years. I almost said addict child. I don't recall their being excited or overjoyed as certainly I was. I think mostly they were just relieved. It's certainly been a journey for all of us. In my case, I can remember feeling as though I were literally taking a step out of the darkness and into the light. It felt like a privilege to be entrusted the way that people do entrust us and an honor to serve. So, in that spirit of deep and abiding gratitude, I welcome you all to this evening of celebration as we honor our colleagues for their years of commitment, service, and how we trust them and what they've done. So, welcome. And lastly, I'd like to introduce Jim Geckler. Jim got his start. Jim will be our, uh, talk about trusted service, he will be our MC tonight. Um, this is Bobby's bio of Jim. It's not necessarily grounded in facts, truth, or accurate dates, but this is how I remember Jim. So Jim got his start as a hotshot problem solver at a St. Paul Sober Living in the early 2000s. He went on to team up with Andrew Wainwright and Chicago Bob Buznanovich at AIR in the Twin Cities. By the time I had moved to Colorado, Jim was running case management at Hazelden in Center City under the watchful eye of our most recent NATAP past, oops, National Association of Addiction Treatment Providers, NAATP past chair, John Driscoll. I'm slowly being conditioned not to say NATAP. Currently, Jim is the CEO of the Harmony Foundation in Estes Park, Colorado. He's done a fabulous job there and that program is thriving. And he's winding down his first term here as a board member at NAATP. Jim currently also serves as chairman of our Ad Hoc Workforce Committee. Jim, I'm so grateful for your years of leadership and service. I'm especially grateful to welcome you as the host and MC of our award celebration tonight, Jim Geckler. <laughs> They've trusted me with a microphone. I don't know. So uh, welcome, I'm Jim Geckler, uh, and I uh, have the privilege of serving as the CEO of the Harmony Foundation in Estes Park. Um, I also sit on the NAATP board, um, chairing the Workforce Committee. Um, I'm also on the TPAS board. Um, thank you, TPAS. I don't know, someone made a noise, that's nice. Um, and uh, I, I do a number of other things that fill my day. Um, most importantly, I'm a man in long term recovery uh, because of the work that you guys all do. Um, Thank you, thank you. Uh, this past February 5th, I celebrated 24 years of continuous sobriety. And because of that, I get to show up and do things like this and uh, not worry too much about tripping up the stairs or what I might say. Right, Sam? How you doing? Thanks, Sam. Um, this is a, a huge honor. The first NAATP conference I went to, um, I had a Capital One credit card that had a limit of $300. Uh, I was working in intervention, and I took the bus from the Nashville Airport to um, the Gaylord. Uh, and was just blown away uh, by everything that was being done. Um, I, I now have a $500 limit on my credit card, so I've come a long way since then. Uh, most of it's prepaid, but that's okay. Um, but I, I get to see the work that's being done, and it has been a, a marvelous thing to observe, to watch the change in NAATP, especially at over the past five or six years, uh, eight years, I guess. How long has Marvin been in the position now? Eight years? 
Um, Marvin, I, I'm pleased to say, came to NAATP from the Harmony Foundation. Um, Dr. Annie Peters, who chairs our force um, project, came from the Harmony Foundation. Um, and uh, Nikki Soda, uh, who put all of um, the effort and has helped me so much on the Workforce Committee, um, also worked at the Harmony Foundation. I'm really hopeful that the NATAP team doesn't grow because I can't lose any more staff. Um, it would be tough. Where is Nikki? Where is she? I can't see. So for people who don't know, um, and those would be the six people in the room not on social media, uh, but on Friday, uh, Nikki uh, was awarded a Master's of Science in Addiction Policy and Practice from Georgetown University. And we talk about awards, and we talk about gifts of recovery. To be able to do that um, as a sober woman, which you openly identify as Nikki, and as a mom, and as someone who's working full time, and is of great service, um, both in, in Palm Beach County and across the country, you should be very proud. We're proud of you, Nikki, so um, thank you for that. We're gonna jump right in um, to uh, the first award, because that's what we're here for. Keep eating, so don't worry about this um, as food comes. I know some of the, the nominees, the people getting awards may be a little nervous and don't want to eat, um, but keep eating, folks, and enjoy. Um, everyone except Zach, would you please put your fork down? Thank you, it's very loud. Thank you, Zach. Um, so our, our first award that we're giving tonight is the Michael Ford Journalism Award. Um, Michael Ford was the first president of NAA and this award was put in place to recognize journalistic uh, efforts um, in both electronic and print media uh, that promote the value and need for addiction treatment. Um, we, we've given this to people who have written books, um, people who have uh, uh, written magazine articles and, and uh, cutting stories about addiction, and tonight the uh, beneficiary of the award is Paul Steinbrunner. And Paul has a, a, a varied career, um, from founder of CSN Productions, which published uh, multiple addiction-specific materials, to the recent work he's been doing with Touchstone Productions. And we were talking a little bit earlier, I had the chance to um, look at uh, Journeys on the Red Road, um, which is part of a document documentary series that Paul did uh, focused on indigenous people and their their work around recovery. It's a special, special documentary. So if you get the chance to look at that, please do. Um, it's a six-part documentary that works with um, a variety of folks, and, and Paul will probably talk a little bit about some of the work that he did there. As a longtime supporter of NAATP and the work that we do, Paul continues to grow uh, information about addiction and treatment. Um, he has published and produced over 50 films, um, which focus many of which focus on um, addiction and treatment. Uh, we need people out there spreading the word about the good work that we do, and Paul is one of those people. So let's give it up for Paul. much for having me here. It's really a pleasure. I was uh, in my editing room in my house in central Washington state. It's very rural. I can see birds fly once, once in a while fly by and deer. And uh, Marvin called me and I'm going, what is this number? I go, Yo. He goes, are you Paul? I go, yes. Then he tells me I'm going to get this award. I, I am. But I, I guess I guess I've been at it for a while, and so I've finally been outed. I I started uh, in 1974. I was volunteering with the Haight Ashbury Free Clinic. We'd go to big concerts, and people would show up at 10 o'clock at night to get ready for the noon venue, and uh, I'd have to scout them out and turn them over to the doctor because um, there was a thing called rock medicine. Anyway, I spent a lot of time at the clinic finding out from the doctors what is going on, what is synergism, what is this, where people are trying to hustle the, 
the doctors for Darvon or something. Anyway, it turned into my first film in 1976 when we made films. It was called Psychoactive. And we really looked at the science. We looked at the science and I was working with the clinic and over time, by 1984, we started Uppers Downers All Arounders and uh, we just took off from there. We just, over the course from 84 to 2014, we made 50 films. And, and we really increasingly moved into neuropharmacology and neurobiology and the understanding of brain chemistry and how that impacts people's actions. But nine years ago yesterday, my partner dropped dead. And that was really a shock. And, uh, you know, I go, well, now what do I do? Uh, it was about a year later that I met um, the daughter of Ray Charles, Sheila Ray Charles, and she, and she told the story of her recovery and how she was in a prison in, in Minneapolis and she was a three-time loser pretty much, you know, and couldn't stay away from the crack and she had to come to Jesus moment and somehow she got out of prison and oh my gosh, she did just a wave of goodness. She was so tender, so caring, and I just went, wow, what is that? You know, I just wanted to tell stories about not the down part of it, not the neurobiology part of it, but the bounce. How do people get back? And so, uh, over time, starting in 2017, I spent time at a treatment center in rural Washington on a reservation, and I was so grateful for them to have me there. And I, I felt so connected because I had felt disconnected and people were just telling the stories about how they were coming out of it. And I saw these people who, you know, several weeks ago couldn't do anything. Now they're doing beating work and they're chanting and they're praying and I'm talking to them and they're crying and I'm crying and it's like, oh my God, I'm alive. This is great. And so I went on to make a film with homeless veterans it's in San Diego, a big program called Stand Down, where a thousand people come, show up at this facility. It's like Woodstock, except for no sex and drugs, and Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And it was just, the transformation was beautiful. I said, well, why can't we have this everywhere all the time? I, I made a film with a place called Homeboy, it's right in the shadow of the biggest, it's huge prison in LA County. Homeboy is the largest gang intervention program in the world. And, and I saw people who just came out of the most awful stuff turn into the most tender people ever. I go, well, this is another miracle every day. And, um, and then I made a film with it. A rabbi, uh, and he had this congregation. And uh, you know, um, he just saw the Torah as the big book, you know. Here we are in the desert with Moses. It's not like it happened then. It is happening now to you, you know. So uh, I just, I just loved it so much. And then I made this film with the Native Americans called Journeys on the Red Road. And now I'm, uh, I made another film that Richard Rohr was involved in. And um, I just, I've been so grateful for all the people that shared their stories and and just really saturated my soul in doing this. And, but I've, I've been up in my editing room and I haven't been out in public too much and it's just so great to be out <laughs> with, <laughs> with people. Uh, you know, I understand this because I used to go to conferences all the time. Anyway, I just finished this other film now with this place called Recovery Cafe. And it's, uh, it's just a beautiful experience and, and I so love uh, what I've been doing and I'm so appreciative of this award, and I'm really looking forward to being able to share this content with all of you and just get the word out, you know, uh, about the miracle of recovery and uh, how people change and grow. It's just uh, such a positive thing. Thank you very much. So, um, <clears throat> Our next award is the Jasper uh, Chensee Volunteer Leadership Award, which recognizes individuals who provided exceptional volunteer leadership in the areas of addiction treatment through board membership and or philanthropy. Um, 
We, we have an interesting thing that happened. Life sometimes gets in our way and things that we can't control. And um, Mrs. Espinosa, who is coming from Mount of Phoenix, so one of the things I want to, we, we are the National Association of Addiction Treatment Providers, which really is not true. Um, we are the International Association of Addiction Treatment Providers, uh, but Apple owns that little I, so we can't put that in front of our name. Um, we have uh, over five international members. Um, Mount of Phoenix has been a member for many, many years of NAATP. Um, we're proud of the partnership that we have. I know they're very proud of the partnership with, with NAATP. Um, Mrs. Espinosa was set to get on a flight yesterday out of Mexico City with a group to come up, um, and there was a volcanic eruption. Um, and she's okay. Air Mexico, though, canceled all of their flights. Um, there are a couple of, of ladies who were coming up um, also who are on United, and in a, in a miracle, United did not cancel their flights. Um, it's a good thing it wasn't Frontier, or it'd still be at the gate. Um, but <clears throat> we're, we're grateful to have um, uh, Dolores and Bertha here to uh, accept the award um, on, on Mrs. Espinosa's uh, behalf. Uh, I, I will admit that my working knowledge prior to this of uh, treatment in Mexico was stuff that I saw in the news and the difficulties that organizations face um, because of drug cartels and uh, the criminal behavior in Mexico providing safe environments for people to be able to get well. Um, Mrs. Espinosa is my hero. Uh, this is just amazing, uh, the work that, that she has done. Um, in, in 1980, uh, she opened Monte Phoenix and was the first chair and still sits on their board. Um, she traveled to the United States to find how to do treatment, um, how to do it properly. Uh, she went to um, the Hazelin Foundation in Minnesota at the time and met with the folks there, um, just as many of the people in this room have done uh, to look at the model. And Monofi still utilizes a Minnesota model um, in their treatment. She, as chair, has, has raised huge amounts of money to manage uh, their growth and their new programs. She's also personally uh, gifted the organization um, very generously. Uh, uh, she uh, helped start the Central for Estudios Superiores. I know that's terrible. Um, I know I totally butchered that. I'm, a, I'm an Irish guy from Western New York, so um, please excuse me, but she set up a school in Mexico to train people how to be counselors and how to deal with addiction. And through that, they've had over 25,000 students become aware of how to properly treat people um, in, in Mexico. Uh, she also founded the, the uh, Klander Clinic um, for shorter term engagement and the Santa Martha Readaptation Center for women in Mexico who have been incarcerated and needed help. Um, Mexico City has a thriving recovery community. Um, I know when, um, and I think Bobby had some of this experience too, I also, one of my many positions at, at the Hazel and Betty Ford Foundation um, was working with alumni and and there's a thriving alumni community in Mexico City that I know is very involved with Mount of Phoenix. Um, in her uh, 43 years of involvement with Mount of Phoenix, um, they've treated over 9,000 patients in, in Mexico. Um, and also, and, and this I think is something we can all learn from, is they have kept a strong focus on family, um, with over 29,000 family members in Mexico receiving support and treatment and education around addiction. Um, the work she's done has been marvelous. I'm very sad that she couldn't be here. Um, I was looking forward to meeting her, but if we could bring her friends Dolores and Bertha to the stage uh, to accept the award for her, please. Well, hello. My name is Dolores and I'm an alcoholic in recovery. And I'm also uh, the therapeutic coordinator at Mont Phoenix. And I would like 
to introduce our CEO at Monte Phoenix, Ms. Bertha Mejia, and afterwards I will read uh, the words Mrs. Espinosa has for all of you. Mrs. Bertha Mejia, please. Thank you very much. How are you? I don't speak English well, but it's for a honor for me to stay here with you. And I know uh, to Guadalupe Espinosa three, 30, three years ago. He's a beautiful person. He's a great person. Thank you very much. As Jim said, unfortunately, Mrs. Espinosa couldn't be here for this uh, extraordinary conditions. Yesterday, the, um, the volcano at Mexico City erupted and, well, not badly, but terrible ashes were everywhere and the airport was closed for some hours. So many flights were canceled. As Jim said, not the United Airlines flight. That's why we are here. But anyway, um, we had to wait about eight hours of delay. But here we are and with all our hearts and all our gratitude. And here are the words of this extraordinary woman who has dedicated her effort to the recovery of people who suffer and their families. These are the words. Steam colleagues of the NATP, ladies and gentlemen, I had every intention of attending this ceremony, but circumstances beyond my control made it impossible. It is an honor to receive this award Thank you. I have worked on the drug and alcohol field in Mexico for 43 years, presiding the first drug and alcohol treatment center since 1979. I have always been fascinated by the potential that each and every addict has to transform her or his life. I have seen many lives that have changed forever because of faith in a higher power and willingness to move on to something better. I want to thank each and every collaborator that has ever been in Monte Phoenix. The award is as much as yours as it is mine. My, parent, my parents, uh, the award is as much as yours as it is mine. My parents, without whom this award would have been impossible. But most of all, I want to thank God and the 12 steps because Without them, in my experience, recovery could be very, very difficult. Thank you, and good evening, Mrs. Wallace. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Just trying to um, think of the the bravery that it takes to start a treatment center in Mexico in 1980, um, and to to stand up for what you know what's that 
what's right. Um, and that's just amazing, uh, just amazing. That it's, uh, when I look at the work that, that we do, that everyone in this room does, that the people that we have at home right now who are working with clients, with patients, um, with family members, um, I'm, I'm blown away on a regular basis uh, that I, I get to be a part of this. Uh, it's really, really quite amazing. Um, the, the nomination process for these awards comes from the membership. Uh, so if you have someone that you want to be nominated for these awards, uh, take part in, in the, the process. Uh, every year uh, the ballots will go out and nominations come in. Um, this year I had the, the privilege of sitting on the nomination committee um, with, with Marvin and Bill Robbins and Bobby um, and Katie and um, what I, what I kept hearing from people who have been engaged in this longer, from Marvin, from Bobby, was that every year we get more nominations and it gets harder and harder to say that one person um, deserves this over another. Uh, we are an exceptional field. Um, and when I look around and, you know, they, the, you know, you hear people at the Oscars and they say it's an honor just to be nominated. Um, I actually, is Gina Thorne still here? No, she left? Okay. So Gina Thorne is not here? She is, she's, okay. Um, <clears throat> at, at Harmony, we did a 50th video. It was a nice little video. It was nominated for an Emmy, um, and I was listed as the producer. So I am an Emmy-nominated person. <clears throat> and I didn't win. And it doesn't feel just as good to be nominated as it does to win. Um, but it, it, you know, in this process, this is, this is a group of people that we're celebrating ourselves. Um, we're celebrating our field. And, um, and I, I just wanted folks to know that the hist in the history of NAATP, years ago we would be scrambling to find someone who was willing to come up and take an award. And we have changed. Uh, the field has changed, this organization has changed, and we have so much to celebrate, so it's so great to be a part of this. The Dr. James West Quality Improvement Award um, is, is focused on new and innovative, successful addiction treatment advances, um, both clinically and operationally, um, that improve the quality or quantity of addiction treatment. Um, in the past, when we've looked at this, it's, it's frequently gone to uh, clinical programming, to people who are working on uh, new or improved modalities. And one of the discussions we had in the nominations this year um, was around the Hanley Foundation, who is a recipient of this year's award. Um, the Hanley Foundation has been around for a very long time. Um, many people here have been engaged. Just so you know, there is a difference between the Hanley Foundation and the Hanley Center. Um, it is not the same group. The Hanley Foundation gives, last year over $10 million was given away to people in Florida and surrounding areas around education um, and training with, with uh, alcohol and drug and substance use disorder excuse me, substance use disorder. Um, they do an amazing job of helping children um, avoid the pitfalls of substance abuse. Uh, the vision of the Hanley Foundation is stop addiction before it starts, um, which I think everyone in here would love to be able to change our treatment centers into bed and breakfasts if we could stop addiction before it starts. It is a noble, noble goal um, to do. The um, through scholarships for inpatient, outpatient, sober living and detox throughout South Florida, uh, to uh, prevention services in the schools in Palm Beach County, the Hanley Foundation has stepped up time and time again to help support people who need a solution that they may not even know they need yet. Uh, so tonight we're gonna celebrate the Hanley Foundation and accepting on the behalf of the Hanley Foundation um, is uh, Director of Philanthropy, Turner Benoit. such an honor and a privilege to be up here. Um, you know, to be in a room full of, of 
my friends, my colleagues, you know, uh, I, I couldn't be here without a lot of you. Um, you know, Rick Hubbard, you know, thank you for being my Uncle Rick. <laughs> um, you know, even, even the likes of Butch Glover, you know, <laughs> he's been there for me forever. But look, this isn't about me. You know, this is about the work of the Hanley Foundation. And just like Jim said, you know, our goal, one of our goals is to stop addiction before it starts. Uh, to that end, this year alone, we've worked with nearly 100,000 kids across the state of Florida to essentially put all of you out of business, right? That's our goal. Um, and to stop addiction before it starts. Obviously, for those people that fall through the cracks, like me and many of us in here, um, our Lifesaver Scholarship Program steps in. Uh, in the past year, we have provided f over 500 treatment scholarships. It was <laughs> Thank you. And what's unique about Hanley Foundation is that we don't provide the treatment, right? So we partner with facilities across the country to do so. And none of this would be possible without many of the providers in this room. And look, you know, we are a pure nonprofit. Every dollar that goes out to this is fundraised. And so these scholarships are not like, you know, someone shows up with $25,000 and then you call Hanley Foundation for another five or 10 to get you close to retail. This is true scholarships where we're paying maybe 10 to 20% of retail. And you know, th there's awful stereotype that this industry is a money grab, but it's not because these are the providers that we work with, both nonprofit and for-profit, that are always open and willing to accept these steep discounts to help people who have no other hope. So on behalf of the Hanley Foundation staff, our board of directors, and most importantly, those people that together we help save, thank you. The generosity of the people in, the, in this room, the generosity of uh, the folks who support us um, is amazing. And it's programs like the Hanley Foundation that uh, get to celebrate that and uh, help people that without the great work that you're doing, Turner, and, your, uh, and the folks at the Hanley Foundation do every day, they wouldn't get help. So thank you. Um, recently, uh, NAATP took a hard look at themselves and uh, realized that there were entire groups of people that we were not serving, um, that the, the actions of diversity, inclusion, and equity uh, were, were things that maybe were catchphrases but didn't come to the core of what we were doing. Um, we are still a long way from where we need to go. Um, we're working on it and we're moving forward and we're being honest and we're willing to say that we're not doing good enough yet, but we're on our way. Um, one of the things that we've done is taken a hard look at the industry and people maybe that we haven't celebrated, um, areas that we haven't lifted folks up, uh, ways that we haven't recognized work that needed to be done. Um, and because of that, we created the Dr. Peter Hayden Diversity, Inclusivity, and Racial Equity Award. Uh, Dr. Hayden is with us tonight, so it's good to have you here. Tonight. This award was set to recognize the champions, and I love the I love that word, um, the champions of diversity, equity, and inclusivity in the addiction recovery field. And tonight, we're going to celebrate Dr. Carolyn Coker Ross. Um, so, Dr. Ross actually did work with Harmony uh, many years ago to help us get a better understanding of eating disorder, um, and with my predecessor, Dot Dorman, um, who who sends her regards. By the way, uh, I told her that you're getting this award. And she, I think her, her, her phrase was, well, it's about time. Um, so, and, and I couldn't agree more. Um, Dr. Ross is a graduate of the University of Michigan Medical School. Uh, she's a board certified physician in preventative medicine and addiction medicine. Uh, she is a consultant, a collaborator, um, a speaker, and a mentor. 
Um, I know there's a number of people in this room whose careers and lives have grown um, because of the work that they've done uh, with Dr. Ross. Um, and there's a great deal of love for you in this room because of that. Uh, this was, um, you know, the, the work that Dr. Ross has done around epigenics, racial trauma, eating disorders, and issues facing women of color. Um, you're a co-founder of the Institute for Anti-Racism and, and Equity, um, the author of uh, multiple books about eating disorder, um, including the Binge Eating and Compulsive Overeating Workbook, Emotional Eating Workbook, and uh, the Food Addiction recovery workbook, um, helping uh, clinicians and organizations understand how to better address uh, the needs of people in their relationship with food while they're dealing with addiction. Um, as a CEO of the Anchor program, which is an online program, um, Dr. Ross developed an eating disorder and emotional eating and food addiction um, access for people online, um, which in the changing times that we've had in the last three years um, has been much needed. Um, I also personally want to thank Dr. Ross, who's been very patient with someone who wants to be an ally and, and, and sometimes makes mistakes. And uh, Dr. Ross has been a, a, a mentor for me in many ways in my development of understanding uh, my role as, as a white man um, in this world and how I can be supportive and be helpful. So I want to thank you for that, Dr. Ross. Um, this. Uh, this is about time, as Dot Dorman said, uh, that we recognize the great work that Dr. Ross has done for decades in this field now. So please join me in bringing up Dr. Ross. getting used to a, a new bionic knee, so it's a good thing. <laughs> well, thanks, Jim, for your kind words, and I just wanted to say, say how much I appreciate receiving such an important award named for the inaugural awardee, Dr. Hayden, whose work I really have admired. Diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging can be seen like something for others. You know, it's not for me, it's for those people, for the historically marginalized people, people of color. However, er, however, everyone in this room has had some experiences of not being included, not feeling as if they belong. From being picked last for a sports team to moving to a new town or being a new immigrant in a new country, I remember the old days when I was a young mother and wife and I moved to a new city and the welcome wagon ladies would come by. Does anybody remember that? <laughs> it was, I mean, it stuck in my memory because it was such a relief to have someone welcome you into a community, give you tips on where to go and what to do. But beyond these everyday experiences, many people with substance use disorders, including my two brothers who got me into this work, have felt the sting of being stigmatized, marginalized, and not being included in their families or communities because of their substance use disorder. And that is one of the most important benefits of 12-step meetings. No matter who you are, no matter where you live, you are welcomed into a 12-step meeting. It is my hope that being welcomed, included, and belonging will one day be part of all of our workplaces, treatment centers, and cultures. That the welcome wagon will be out for all Americans, regardless of race and ethnicity. Thank you very much. So about um, 19 years ago, um, I was working for an intervention group in Minneapolis, St. Paul, and I got invited to a referent event. 
Um, and it was in Ocala, Florida, um, which is an interesting place to go uh, if you've never been there before. Um, the uh, golf carts are all decked out. Um, there's codes, so it's a, if, if you haven't been there, it is a retirement community. Um, and it, I believe, I believe this is true, according to the, the documentary, has the highest STD rate in the country. <laughs> and <laughs> is it, among, 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 among people of a certain generation, yes. Um, I, I know my sister-in-law's parents retired to the villages, and it, her father passed away. At her father's funeral, someone asked her out, and she was married three months later. So, uh, but it, it was an interesting place, and it was uh, uh, Judy Crane who invited me to that. Um, the 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 thing that I remember most about that, Judy, is that uh, I was nobody. I was, I mean, I thought I was, but um, I was this guy who was coming down just to learn a little bit about trauma um, and how maybe I could refer some people there. Um, it was never about send me business. It was never about... Um, well, you know, we, we gave you a massage and we took you to dinner. Um, where's the referral? It was how can we collaborate? How can we work together? How can we help more people in, in, in the best way that we possibly can? Um, there are relationships that I have today, and I don't know if I've ever talked to you about this. There are relationships that I have that I formed on that time uh, visiting you uh, that have been lifelong friendships and, and strong relations. Gina Thorne, Jeff Schlund, Christine Massey um, were all on that trip with me, and it was uh, special, and I, I want to thank you for that. The Nelson Bradley Career Achievement Award, and um, you know, I, I think there's got to be a little double-edged sword to getting a Lifetime Achievement Award or career, because you're not going anywhere. Where. Um, th this is this is in recognition of what you have done. Um, the 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 award is there for lifelong achievement for individuals who have made a significant contributions to modern addiction treatment. I think I probably could just bring you up now, but I'm not going to, uh, uh, because that you've done it. So uh, Judy is a certified addiction professional, uh, sex addiction therapist, hip hypnosis hypnotist hypnotist. Um, uh, specializing in EMDR trauma and PTSD. You know, so that's, that's Judy's certifications. Um, but who Judy is, uh, is, is why you're getting this award. Um, Judy is uh, an exceptional clinician and human being um, who's a philosophy that the majority of people addicted to substances or process addiction will remain stuck until their personal, familiar, intergenerational, and intrauterine utero, utero, uh, history is exposed. Once you understand the trauma, you will understand the behavior. Um, Judy was doing this before trauma became chic. She made it trendy. Um, and it's not trendy, that's the wrong word. You made it in vogue. Uh, and I was, do you like that, John? Yeah. That's good, I'm, I'm glad I got to, I got, a, I got a laugh out of John West, I can go home now. Um, the, I was at a, an event recently and someone said to Judy, well, you invented trauma, so why can't you just help us with this? And it, what you did was you opened up to the entire field in a way that's understandable for clients, for families, and for clinicians, that trauma treatment is key to getting well. Um, as the CEO and founder of The Refuge, a healing place, you helped thousands and thousands of people and informed an entire field of the need to do this work. Um, as the uh, founder and author, author of Spirit to Spirit Trauma Training, you have helped clinicians become better at their jobs. And through that, you have saved lives. Um, as the uh, co-founder of the Guest House with John West in 2017, you continue this work. And one of the pieces that um, if people don't know 
about this aspect of the work that Judy does. She has always had a focus on clinicians and the need that they have. The need that, that all of us who work in this field have about becoming healthy ourselves in order to be able to help other people. Um, we can't help people do the work if we haven't done it. Um, and it, at the guest house, uh, they make certain that there's always a bed uh, for a clinician if you need help. Um, and, and we're very grateful for that. Um, this must be in the future because I just read at 76 you will be launching, uh, but you launched a research project uh, to better understand and provide help for impaired clinicians. Um, we, the, the last three years, I don't think we've even begun to scratch the trauma that healthcare providers have been through. Um, and the work that, that Judy and John are doing at the guest house will help support people in getting well. Um, it's necessary. Uh, there were so many people um, that wanted to see you recognized for the great work that you have done. Um, it's, you're, you're, you're personally one of my favorite people to run into. Um, it's you always admire my shoes, which is a huge win and, and makes me feel good and it heals my inner child um, all over the place. Um, I'd like to ask anyone in this room who in some way has been touched by the work that Judy Crane does to stand up. Pretty amazing, Judy. Let's bring Judy to the stage. going to stand behind the podium. <laughs> Among other things, I lost five inches, and so I am short. Um, thank you all very much. I'm, um, it's funny, I was, everybody kept asking me um, if I was nervous, and I wasn't until I walked into the room, and now it's uh, everything I thought I was going to say, I have to try and remember again. Um, Jim, thank you so much. Where'd you go? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're behind me. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but thank you so much. Uh, let me set things straight. Uh, the refuge was in Ocklawaha, Florida, where the question is where the frig is Ocklawaha, and um, the village is what he's referring to, which is where 55 and older, and yes, the highest rate of STDs. Um, <clears throat> And it's interesting when people retire how they have lived a life that's been really lovely and all of a sudden this addiction that they've had under control kind of goes crazy and all kinds of stuff are going with those golf carts that are crashing into people and things like that. Um, so Lifetime Achievement Award. Uh, when people were congratulating me in the beginning, what I said was, in order to get a Lifetime Achievement Award, all you have to do is get old and stay in the industry. But um, um, I, uh, I'm, I'm 77, and uh, I know I don't look it. But, um, but, I'm going, but I'm going to live to be at least 107, so hang on. And um, two things. First of all, I'd never got here by myself, and you know that phrase of, of, of standing on the shoulders of great people. It's, it's what, much more than that. Um, at this table, would my kids stand up, please? I have three children. <laughs> Tom, Maria, and Michelle. And I have two of my grandchildren, of my five grandchildren, my beautiful daughter, granddaughters, Marley and Devin, and Devin's husband. I share that because I didn't get sober till my kids were 16, 18, and 19. And so consequently, they experienced all of the insanity and the, and the pain of, of uh, having an alcoholic, drug-addicted mother. 
Uh, they lost their father when they were very young. And um, so it was me, me the crazy person. Um, so getting from that crazy person to be able to stand up in this room with a life of purpose is a really big deal. And in this room, that's who we are. We are very, very different than almost any other industry that you can imagine. Where is it that people who have created turmoil and disaster and insanity and guilt and shame and remorse can find something that gives their life absolute beautiful purpose and become amazing people doing amazing things? And this is a room filled with exactly that. There's not anybody in this room that hasn't affected multiple, multiple, multiple people, hundreds and thousands of people. I am so proud to be in this industry. I am so very proud because um, I fought it. I, you know, I was a waitress with a degree when I got sober. You know, I worked in Palm Beach and I was doing really well and making nice money as a waitress. But and I took a meeting into the Lantana Women's Correction uh, facility, and uh, it was a, a drug and alcohol uh, program. And um, the clinical director was one of my customers at lunch every day, and he came to me one day and he said, Judy, I have a job for you. And I said, what are you talking about, Mike? He said, well, I have a counseling position for you at, the, at Lantana. I said, what are you talking about? I'm a waitress. And he said, no, no, I've watched you in meetings, and you, you know, you've got that. And so at the time I was married, and I, my husband and I walked up and down the beach, and I came back to Mike and I said, mm, I make more money waitressing, thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, I turned him down three times and then God said, oh yeah, watch. And I got fired. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, and it just, you know, and it, there I was. And God said, oh yes, you will. And I, I pay attention. The people that I hire have that, you know. They, they have that in their gut. Um, <clears throat> I am absolutely passionate about helping people in this industry. I've watched over and over again when we can take doctors and lawyers and airline pilots and bring them into treatment. And after 30, 60, 90 days, we can send them back to work. God help us, they're flying our planes and doing our surgery. And, you know, when we do that, they, they get... They go to treatment, they get monitored, and they do that monitoring for five years and it works. And yet, my experience has been over the years, we don't do that for our own. And so, uh, Jim's right, that's my, my passion right now, is to try and be able to create something for our industry that will be equal or better than what we do for other professions. Um, Interestingly enough, I hadn't planned on saying all of that right now, but I guess it's important, and this is the right place to say it. Um, I couldn't be standing here without so many people in this room. When I got clean and sober, there was nobody except my kids. Nobody wanted me around. Um, I was a pathetic human being begging to get sober, and it happened. And today, I can look in this room, and I know most of you and half of you I'm intimate with. Not that way, but, you know. Right. Maybe, no, no. <laughs> but I bet if I ask how many of you are my friends and I ask you to stand up, I'd like you to do that. Could you stand up if you're my friends? If you consider that you're my friends? Yeah. What a big deal that is for an addict and an alcoholic. Thank you. I can go to any conference at 7 a.m. in the morning and go into a meeting and there you all are. And you lift me up and you make me laugh and you make me feel like I'm something worthwhile. Um, this, this means everything to me and I'm so grateful. And I was so surprised that my kids were coming and my grandkids, it's just the coolest thing. How cool is it? that I can sit here and tell my story to my grandkids and they, they can listen to that and not be ashamed of me. I love you, I love you too. <laughs> um, thank you very much. I'm really, really grateful. 
Um, not sure what else I was going to say, but it all went out the window. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So this past Friday was my 57th birthday, um, and I've just found out I can now move to the villages. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to need to do some trauma work around that, Judy. Uh, uh, but uh, what a wonderful evening. Um, uh, I think it's time for dessert or to continue eating. Um, I want to remind some people, Judy mentioned the 7 a.m. meeting tomorrow. There'll be a 12-step meeting in the Alexandria room. Um, it's always a good meeting. Uh, the traveling road meeting, as it's called, uh, is a great time to get together to uh, see old friends, uh, make new friends, and realize um, why we get to be here. Uh, it's a great time. The, could we just go back? One, please. Um, the uh, Phoenix, thank you to the folks in the Phoenix are doing a yoga session um, at 7 o'clock also. Um, if you want to work on body, um, and uh, please RSVP to that in the app. And then um, the folks at uh, Turning Point of Tampa. Is Robin here? Has she made it in yet? Okay, so the folks at Turning Point of Tampa, thank you to them. They'll be taking care of breakfast at 8 o'clock in the exhibit hall tomorrow. Um, and then we'll be coming back in here um, for the launch of the conference uh, with Marvin and, and Bobby. I hope I didn't embarrass NAATP that much in this. Um, I tried to take care of it. I know that uh, Dr. Kelly had a bit of an, uh, uh, an accident. Um, he will not be here tomorrow. Is that correct, Katie? Um, he won't be able to make it, um, but the, tomorrow's um, opening session will still be incredibly worth attending. Um, a lot of great information there. Um, so looking forward to seeing everyone uh, tomorrow. If we could get the folks who got awards, um, and where would you like them to gather? Um, just, I guess, over here so we could take photos with everyone um, for those awkward, I got a prize um, pictures that we need to take. So thank you and have a great evening. And on behalf of Mrs. Espinosa and Monty Phoenix, I'm very happy and feel privileged of being here with so, so many important people. And from, my, from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate and thank you. Um, I'm, I'm really so thrilled to be at NATEF. And I know I'm supposed to say NAATP now. This is a room filled with my friends and colleagues. And I love this work that we do. And this is the most extraordinary place to be on a night like this. And thank you so very much. I'm so, so delighted that you were willing to give me this, this award. Now I just need to keep on uh, staying alive. I love the fact that I was selected for this, not because I needed the award, uh, I needed to uh, be with my people here, the people at uh, N uh, double ATP, and it puts me in proximity with people that can help move the message into the public and stuff like that, which is really the primary thing. So it's nice to be creative, but it doesn't really come to anything unless you can share it. So it's all about community, connection, conviviality, because you know, the opposite of it, we just seen too much of it. You know, loneliness, depression, isolation, poison. So I'm, I'm really grateful to be here. I truly am. Hi, everyone. It's so good to be at NATAP 2023 and to receive the award in Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, the Dr. Peter Hayden Award. And I'm happy to um, actually meet the original awardee, Dr. Hayden, who's doing some amazing work. So lots of fun. So excited to be here at NAATP in Washington, D.C. this year. Excited about all of the presentations. Great award ceremony tonight. The MC was okay. Uh, really excited about what we're going to do on Wednesday with Hill Day. 
Um, it's great to get this group together and make a difference.